Welcome to this episode of the Women and Money Cafe. Today's episode, okay, we cannot take the credit for the title. So we're calling it Money Talks, but should it? And that's not us that came up with that. I'll introduce you in a minute, the person responsible for that. But the, the impetus behind this is I read a blog a couple of months ago. I just thought, oh, that's a really balanced way of looking at it. Because it's a chat that we have amongst ourselves every day so often. You won't be surprised to hear that you know those posts about the 10K months and the six-figure businesses and the seven-figure businesses? They proper do our head in, right? And then I read this blog and thought, oh my God, that is the most balanced blog I've ever read about money. Let's go and track down the person that wrote it and get them on the podcast. So today, Michelle and Jennifer and I are joined by Helen Johnson. So Helen is a coach in EFT. An NLP therapist and coach trainer. She's on a quest to bring people great coaching and personal development, but without the bullshit. So she founded Coach and Beyond, which offers ICF coaching training, which I can personally attest for how good it is. And it's all about helping people to help themselves and others to make their strengths and find fulfillment of work and life. So welcome to the cafe, Helen. Hello, thank you. And thank you for endorsing me. <laughs> I was about to say, do you definitely find it's no BS? Because that's very important. <laughs> yeah, no, so I can testify that it is no BS because I have done Helen's course. And that is the beauty of it is there's none of that coachy nonsense that goes on. It's just good, proper training. So, yeah, so welcome along. And uh, Michelle, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. It's nice to have Helen here. Yeah. And at the other end of the show, we've got Jennifer. How are you today, Jennifer? Yeah, not too bad. I think this will be quite an interesting one today. Well, possibly controversial as well. We'll wait and see how it develops. Right, so, Helen, as I said, I read your blog and I just thought, wow, you're really well balanced when it comes to money. Or at least you can write really well balanced stuff about money. I was like, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> In my actual life, when it comes to money, but definitely around attitudes to money, yeah, and the feelings that we that we have around it. I don't buy into a lot of the sort of conversation, that, not even overt conversation, but like just the underlying beliefs that are going on, and just this like really toxic narrative that's happening. I can't say I'm always the best with money because of my little dopamine hits that I like to get from spending on stuff. <laughs> but I, I've i learned, I think, like quite a good balance around what it means and, you know, income and what that means about you and like my relationship to money and also investing in things and like, you know, spending money on things for the benefit of myself and things like that. So, yeah, I think, yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I know you're well balanced. You know, it's one of the things. So a phrase that I hear a lot, and every time I hear it, I have to correct it because I just can't let it go, is when people start talking about charging what they're worth. Mm-hmm. And that I fundamentally have a problem with. We don't charge what we are worth because we are all humans. We are all priceless. So 100%. The exchange of money for the thing I do has got zero to do with my worth as an individual. But and it's this thinking is such a, an easy phrase to, to say, isn't it? And it just sneaks out without us realizing the meaning. That, it's not just an easy phrase that gets bandied around. It's literally taught and it's literally encouraged. And what's horrible about that is imagine if you're the person that isn't charging so much or isn't earning so much, and then you're internalizing that. That it's like, and then there's that shame as well that you, of like, it's not just the shame that like, oh, I don't know if I'm worth as much as that person, the compare and despair stuff. But there's also the, then like, there's this whole thing around how you're treating yourself or how you're thinking about yourself. And like, it just becomes this like minefield. And there might be loads of reasons why we're, choosing our pricing strategy the way we are or like I mean I, I and also it's it's just it's just a game you're never going to win is it because if you think you have to charge what you're worth well then the next income bracket the next you're going to go up and up and up and up and up on what you need to feel like you're being valued like it is never going to end you know mm. anything that you do which is about self-esteem 
or like your value that is not actually about your inherent, exactly what you're saying about your inherent worthiness is going to screw you up, whether that's having relationships and needing, you know, somebody to love you in order to be, feel good about yourself. That's going to screw up. If it's getting paid a lot of money, that's going to screw up. Like it's exhausting and it's just not the same thing. Like having a successful relationship or having loads of money, which is a really welcome resource, is just not the same thing as what value you are, what you're bringing to the table, who you are as a person and all of that stuff. Mm. So yeah, it's a, it's a big fat lie, but I, it drives me mad too. And you hear it all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. And do you know what? So we do all our most meaningful research on Instagram because we find it more reliable than Google. So I went to Instagram earlier on in the week and asked Instagram how they felt about seeing posts online about how much money somebody's making. So we had one person mm. that said, that feels icky, please don't do it. We had one person that says, yeah, shout it from the rooftops. Everybody else came back with saying, no, it's more nuanced than that. And when I started having the conversation with the people who were saying it's more nuanced than that, what they were all saying is, it seems to be about the intention that's behind it. So if you're out there and you're talking about the successes that you've had, be that the money that you've made or the holidays that you're having, you're doing that from a place of trying to lift others up and show them what is possible. They're fab because it's normalized and being able to talk about money and we really want that. But you've got, to use one of your phrases, Helen, you've got the shadow side, haven't you? <laughs> I'm going to have to be really restrained here and not, not swear. And it's the toxic people. But that's my personal <laughs> thought. This is what I thought before I read your blog, Helen. By the way, I'll, we'll put a link to it in the show notes. So I think the thing is, I don't know. I don't know about this because I'm not even sure I go in for the idea that it's like inspirational. Right. Unless it's connected to life is beautiful and I, I'm living a, like, I'm just living a really full life and I'm, I'm, I, I, and tapping into everything that's good in life and, and this, that, and the other. But I think a lot of the time when people think they're being inspiring, in inverted commas, they're actually just showing, like, conspicuous kind of consumption. They're just showing spending money, expensive things, this, because they do think that that's the same as living a good life and they're not the same thing. You know, if somebody is really, I keep using the phrase, really well-resourced, and they can enjoy things that they enjoy, then fantastic. You know, that's great. And you're celebrating life and that you don't want to hide that you have stuff, right? But if you're someone who is trying to show people the kind of life they can get, like it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit like you can't depict sex visually, the actual experience of sex, right? <laughs> so it's like it then becomes this like visual depictions of sex become like really caricatures or most of sex or just like it's not actually what it's experienced as. But you say you don't have sex like it is in the movies. No, I don't have that sex. Where like we're going. <laughs> is that where we're going like this? I don't think anybody's having sex like it is Unless in the movies. Like, that's, that's, that's your point. I'm not a 40 year old wedging. I've got two kids, but no, no, no. <laughs> But what I'm saying is, is like it, there's something about it that's that, that that makes it not anything like what you actually experience in real life. Which is why we have kids nowadays thinking that all of these things people like when actually they don't, because it's not sensually enjoyable. Because sex is about your sensuality, it's about your five senses really experiencing. Yeah, it's about the the. And I know that there is a visual element, but like there is experiences in your body that you cannot depict, right? So it's the same with this stuff. It's like, you, you can't just be like, oh, look at all this money I'm spending, all this money I'm spending, this is a good life, because a good life is so many more things than that. And really, if you're like not a very interesting, grounded human who can't communicate like joy of life in your posts or whatever it is, then I guess that's what you have to do. Be like, oh, look at my jet. <laughs> but it's like, it's not what an embodied experience of being happy really looks like. And it doesn't mean that those things aren't okay. It's, are you living an embodied, like, satisfying life? And are you, you know, growing and, and, and thinking and engaging with life and just getting everything out of it? Or are you just like, 
look at my expensive thing and my other expensive thing and my other expensive thing. It's great. It's like, how th- that is it's not telling me anything, you know? Mm. Mm. Does that make sense? What I'm it saying? does. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting the sex metaphor, but it does actually work. It does work. Uh-huh. It does. It was unexpected, but thank I mean, you for I sharing. I don't know why you weren't expecting it, Julie. All the better, yeah. shouldn't I? Like, but what but is that funny. kind of thing? Like, what's my experience of it? You know, it's funny because you do actually share that in your blog, not your sex life, but you, you're making the point that generally we just we're not comfortable talking about money. And you, I think you make the point that you know all your friends know the most intimate details of your life. But there's only two people that know what's in your bank balance. And it's just that we we just fundamentally don't like talking about money. And I just wondered what your thoughts on where that where that comes from. I I, I talk in the blog about two things. I think well, and then the same really, but one is I is is that we do think that it kind of says something about our talent, our value, or at least other people's perception of our value, right? And and what we're contributing, yeah? So if I'm a coach and I'm not earning whatever the figure is because there's always someone earning more and I'm a coach trainer as well, do I want to share, you know, what I am? And Because somebody might think, well, I, I can't be trained by her because she's earning less money. Because we know that that stuff happens, you know, or you can actually buy into it and think that about yourself. But there's just this sense of like, I want, for, like, even if you don't buy into it, it's like, I just want to be seen for me. And I feel like once I slap a price tag on myself, people see the price tag, right? But, so we know that. So until you really are thinking my price tag is, is, is super impressive. And that could be, because look, my friend, she's marrying a, a guy who works in very, very, with very rich people, right? In big business. And she's just like, do you know what? He thinks all of these coaches wanking on about six or seven figure, you know, businesses is pathetic because he deals in companies that are making billions. So it's like nothing to him, you know, and there's like all these egos around it. And he's like, what? Like, what? Why is your ego in it? Whereas, you know, if you're not there yet, then you're looking at it. Like the, the goalposts are always moved. But it, we still do think there's like a, there's a status competition going on. And a lot of us like don't want to get involved in that or we feel that like we are losing. And so that's the second thing that I think is that it's linked to shame, you know? Mm-hmm. Sex, like I just mentioned, and money, and it are very much linked to like they're extremely. Like I was talking to my friend about it, so it's a long story why I can't reveal why, but it was to do with certain project, and I was like, okay, so this one's on sex, so the next one's on money, and she was like, how do you know? I said because obviously, and then the next one after that is is grief, because these are the things that we can't handle and we don't talk about for various reasons you know grief because it's terrifying money because it's also terrifying I didn't even put that in the blog but if we don't feel secu- like it's, it's it's fundamental to our security and sex the same thing because it's vulnerability but also because it's all then also associated with shame we're made to feel ashamed if we talk about grief we're made to feel ashamed if we talk about sex not in my world because people don't last in my world if they can't talk about these things, but in others, and the same with money. But the one that I've brought into the most in my life probably is money. And that's definitely because of messages I got about how I should and shouldn't be behaving, like like basically getting that my attitude is a bit wrong, you know? And so if we're not living up to whatever standards we've got, or we don't we we think it's going to show something about our status or who we are. Of course, we don't want to show it. It's just like too exposing, you know. Mm. Now I'm just gonna if it's not too cringy, I'm gonna read a bit of your blog to you because I'm just trying to find the right bit. Yeah. So it's like, oh, wow, that's really good, right? So there's a bit here where you're writing that if you have half a brain, you likely also know that money actually has very little to do with character or even talent and skill. Yet we get judged on it. I just thought, oh, so having wealth is an easy way to score social points. I was just like, so 
Uh huh. So money has little to do with character, talent, or skill. And I've got yeah. so, when I read the sentence, I went, "Ooh, I do know that, but I'm not sure I remember it all the time." Well, I see it like I see it as well in in dating. You know, especially amongst like women dating men, right? Or this 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 just constant obsession with thinking it means more than it does about a person. And I'm just like, I understand if you want to say to me, it's important to me to be resourced, right? And I don't want to have to worry about this. That's fine. But don't try and tell me that someone who's in poverty is less of a good character or less of a worthy person. Like, that's not true. You don't know what their journey's been or where they're coming from. And also, it just isn't true full stop because how many people have money in absolute twat, you know? So it's fine to say on a practical level, there's a practical consideration here for me, which is that it does matter to me because I really want to be well resourced and I don't want to be carrying that all on my own versus I can't respect a person who doesn't have money. That's a horrible way of thinking. People have that in dating, people, but people have that in the business world as well. Once they're, they're judging your value and your level of respect and your authority based on how much money you're making or how much you charge. And do you know what's sad is the narcs have a great time because they don't, they don't give a damn what lies they tell or how they represent themselves. So they just slap a huge price tag, use smoke and mirrors in a way that anybody sort of like grounded in reality wouldn't. And then they'll, and then people buy into it and they're like bringing it in because like they've just sold you that they're willing to, to sell you. Whereas someone who's got more integrity, this, that, and the other is actually like, well, I don't want to misrepresent myself. Mm. Actually, no, you like, you're not misrepresenting yourself, your, yourself because you're perfectly valuable no matter what you charge or you might not be, you might actually be sure. Oh, time to tell. All right, no, that's really interesting. I'm just curious then, just bring you in for a second, here, Michelle. What are your thoughts so far on what we've kind of covered? Obviously, stay away from the sex if you want. We are the Women in Money Cafe. That's another podcast. <laughs> there's a couple of things that have kind of popped up for me. So there's there's two angles. So what you, what you were just saying about the dating and people judging other people based on their money. So from a personal perspective, I'm married for the second time. I had two young children. I did online dating. So, and I did meet my husband that way. And it was very interesting that I had a friend at the time who should remain nameless because they are no longer my friend, who then told me they would no longer socialize with me, with my now husband, because he was not earning a level that she thought I should be with someone who should earn or didn't have the profession that she thought I should be with somebody. Now, my husband is ex-forces. And she said, you know, he was, he was forces and he's, he's this and you should be with somebody who's at this level and earns this amount of money. And it's a really tough time for me because that was one of my closest friends. But what she hadn't appreciated was I actually grew up in a forces family and I lived in married quarters all my life. And actually, you know, I have no issue with anybody's status in where they are. But it was very interesting to see my friends' reactions. And I actually lost two friends because they didn't approve of who I was dating and who I've now been married to for eight years. But it was very interesting to see that those friends who actually said it, one was actually not so well-resourced and one was incredibly well-resourced. So it was completely different ends of the spectrum. I'm having a whole yeah, shit moment. I, I did too. Wow. What are you thinking, Jennifer? Well, I hope you put your friend right in the bin for that because you just, you can't have people that around you. Your status should in no way, or your wealth should in no way dictate who you are as a person and who it is either that you love or even how you view yourself on anything. So money is a, a measurement and a way to make the world go round, but it doesn't change who you are as a person or it shouldn't. And I think that was what I was trying to get across to her and neither of them are no longer my friends, I have to say, from that moment because I didn't want to be sort of with people like that. But that's where status, I think, is such 
such a big thing. And when you see things on social media of, I earn this much, I do this, I do that. And actually you could have this if you come and do this with me and pay this much to do that. And I think you're getting in a very difficult cycle then that you're then having to pay out because you think you're going to earn more and you'll be much higher up the status ladder. So I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Helen, where, you know, where you're told to pay something to actually earn that money. I think it's interesting because I think this does actually link as well to what we're talking about in certain, you know, before we were officially talking, which is, you know, where I said there's two types of debt. Am I allowed to say that? Oh, um, I was going to if you didn't. <laughs> there are two types of debt. And there are the ones that are doing what I said, which is that, like, they think that, like, showing an expensive thing is 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 in and of itself inherently sort of fantastic and some things are you know my friend posted a very delicious looking meal this morning I was like wow you know so I'm not saying expensive things aren't good but it's that like I'm just showing how much money I have because that's that's what worth that's what worthiness is that's what success is that's what you know that's what value is you know look at me doing so well blah 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 there's that And those are the people that are like, you could be doing the same as me if you give me loads of money. And guess what? Often those people, they ain't about that life. They they ain't about sharing a piece of that pie with you. They are very much about, I'm going to teach you to not get quite as far as me, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like, and be one of my minions. And I'm sure we've all seen that happen, right? Like they just want minions. So it's like, you can be under me, but not like with me, you know? Yeah. So firstly, it's always bullshit when they come out with that. But also there's the type of dick that buys into this idea that like the more money someone has means the more impact or value they're going to have. Right. So they think that, oh, they're doing really, really, really well. So I'm going to value them more than this person who's doing modestly. But actually that person's like maybe more of a genius or whatever. It's just not driven in the same way or whatever the story is. Right. So those people annoy me more because they're the ones that create like the market because they're the ones that are like, I am, I am going to decide what your value is based on the price tag on you. But the thing is about that as well is that those people are also often the ones that do buy into that. And I'm not like, so I'm not judging here because we could all be in that space, but there is that that snobbishness that you were talking about. Like I'm actually valuing people based on their like job and how much money they have and just horrible stuff. And trust me, I've been in those worlds and they ain't all that, you know? <laughs> like and and they ain't necessarily all happy either. So is we know that. We know that, but we don't know that. Like we just keep fooling ourselves that it means something that it doesn't. But the thing is that also those people often what we're doing is trying to buy the success. So what we want is to get success by osmosis. We think that being in their presence where they've got loads of money, we're going to leech it off of them and we're going to get it out for ourselves, right? So often like those people are trying to actually drain the energy out of that person and get something of it, right? They're not like in standing in their own inherent like abundance and their own inherent value. And like, how can I create something beautiful here? They're like, how can I suck from here? How can I suck from there? And you know, you see the ones doing that really desperately where they've learned to breadcrumbs. They're in everyone's group, like breadcrumbing like crazy, but in this really like nervous kind of leachy horrible energy where you're like oh get off me because they don't feel okay they're just trying to suck 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 and I think that we can all be there sometimes where we just want to be around it so I I saw with someone they had like a big audience not doing as well as they presented actually but definitely looking like they were like super super successful and so many people like was you know it was becoming clear that this person was like not a safe person to be around and a lot of people were still doing stuff for free in, you know, talking on the, you know, the whatever days and doing stuff for free or doing testimonials or being involved in whatever in some way because they wanted that person's like audience and they wanted that person's success. And they thought that like being in the person's world, and I was just like, it never will be. Do you know why? Because 
actually underneath it, they are seeing you as less than and they're communicating to everyone around that you're less than. They, they need to be the top dog, right? And you're less, you're never going to get that abundant, like fiery sort of life and success through that kind of interaction. And I think that often goes on. It's like, well, if I just pay to be in that person's world, then, then, then I'll leech it off them. It doesn't work like that. It's no. really interesting because as I'm listening to you talk there, when you're describing the relationship between the two, it seems to be then that when we get this line blood between value, worth, money, it becomes quite a parasitical relationship. Yeah. And that, who wants to be in a parasitical relationship? But yeah, that's not nice. Well, but there's, that... there's a word that you've used. You know. <laughs> there's, a, there's a word that you've used several times and it's in the blog and it like, and Michelle, you've used it now as well. And it just completely changes how I think and feel about it. And it's you talk about being well-resourced. Not, I want to have lots of money. I want to date someone with lots of money. I don't think much of you because you don't have lots of money. It's about, it's about that being well-resourced. Because why, why is that feeling different for me, Helen? To just, I want because, lots of money. Because that, that's where the life, the joy of living, as I keep saying, is first, right? It's you're not making money, you're a god. <laughs> like, and it's about I deserve to be resourced in the same way as you deserve love. You deserve, you know, community. You deserve support. You deserve, you know, all of the things that make life more flowing, easier, more beautiful, more joyful, all of it, right? So, it, that's where I think we get the flip side is we see all of this bullshit and then some people are like, well, I'm going to flip that on its head and you're a dick for wanting money and people with money are dicks and, you know, money is, you know, the root of all these. It's actually love of money that's the root of all evil, i.e. making money your God, right, is the root of all evil, not money. And so then they're like, it's like a counterculture, but it's the same thing, which is attaching what lack of worth to, to money, right? So the less you have, the more worthy you are. The more you have, the less worthy you are. It's still attaching it worth to money, whereas what it actually is, is just a great resource for having to do so many things, giving your kids a great life, giving yourself a great life. Like we all deserve to be really well resourced, right? And th things like, it's the same way, you know, we want in like we want good plumbing and good electricity and, you know, transportation. And I don't know, I'm looking at my my list here. Yeah, knowledge, information, this and the other. It's like all the things that we need that are just the resources that we need for a good life. Instead of like, this is this is connecting to my work. It's like this is about my the access to abundance really if we're going to get worried about it right so i like that so in a minute michelle and jennifer be, be warned i'm coming to you with a question okay you're getting a heads up here and it's just really what i've taken away from the conversation so far so what i've taken away from this is because i will hold my hand up and say that i get when i see those posts they annoy me and what i'm going to take away from the conversation is just trying to Drown myself in, like, that's somebody just doing their thing. I don't need to engage with that. But being going out into the world and being intentional about how I value people and how I value myself, making sure that's got nothing to do with money. I don't think I normally do that anyway. But it's just being extra intentional about it. So I guess, uh, Jennifer, I'm just curious about what your key takeaway from the conversation has been. I probably just really see it as that you shouldn't judge people completely on their wealth at all. Like some of the best people I've ever met have no financial wealth, but in terms of how the joy that they've brought to my life, they've gave me the most wealth I could imagine. But they don't go out into the world and they're not showy and they're not flashy or anything. And what they do is ever only good. But I also know people that have plenty of financial wealth that are really good with their money and really helpful to other people with it. And on the other hand, I know plenty of other people that put things out, at least publicly, to try and get more people in into their kind of platforms and it's it isn't to distribute their own wealth. No. No, it's not. <laughs> it, it rarely is. No. 
Do you know, as you're it's saying that there, as the, what popped into my head, Jennifer, because there's something wrong in my brain, is when you start talking about people that don't necessarily have lots of money and the good that they can do. And what popped into my head is boxes. Like anybody that's ever had a cat or small children, it's how much fun can they have for boxes? Christmas Day arrives, right? And they've got all these presents. And like, what they really want is the box. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you buy expensive gifts. All you really need to do is be able to buy a kid a box and, and the kid's happy. I don't know why that's where my head went. If you could only ever get boxes, like, you're not very well resourced either, are you? You know, if you're stealing boxes out of people's front yard, or you're going the to the... Yeah, let's not go for the box tangent. <laughs> Michelle, what insights have you had from our conversation with Helen? I guess they're pretty similar to, to yours and Jennifer's, but it is about not judging people by their wealth. I don't think that's something I do because I am very conscious. Where I've worked in two different sectors, so what I do now, financial planning, I can work with some really, really wealthy people. But I've also worked at the other end and I've worked in a, in a credit union where unfortunately it's people who can't get bank accounts, who can't get everyday standard products. And some of them had more value to me in a relationship that I built with them than some of the more wealthy people that I know. And I think it is just that, that judgment. And I would never want anyone to judge me on what I earn or what I have. So I'm quite guarded, I guess, about how what I earn, what I have, because I have been at different areas along that spectrum. And I'd be really upset if someone judged me. And I think that's why I keep that close to my chest, because I don't want to be judged in that way. I want I to be judged for me. So we all like know that it, it's equated with status. And it's like, do I want to enter into that game? Mm -hmm. you know? But it's, it's, it's really separating the... What impact am I making? Who am I? Like, and character, status, impact, value from the money side, while also knowing that everyone having a lot of money is a great thing. That's that. That's what needs to be. Otherwise, it's just the, the, the flip side, you know. So it's like valuing. When we look at someone who's got loads of money, we should think it's great that they've got like they've got a lot of resources at their fingertips. I hope they're using them really well. You know, mm. instead of, well, they must be like next level better than the next person that doesn't have that money. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think it's very much, I always say to clients, they're options. You, the money gives you options. It doesn't change your life. It just gives you the options to pick that you could maybe do a few things differently to other who are in different mm. circumstances. And we build wealth. That's what we do. But I'd always gear it that we build it to give you more options so that you haven't just got two or three, you've got four or five or six or seven so yeah i think it, it can be a dangerous game sometimes and staying back from that is is probably the nicest thing we can do to ourselves sometimes absolutely your learning should never really dictate your success or at least how you view yourself as being successful yeah uh, and it's interesting because i think you mentioned in the blog how shame is so intimately linked with money and you talk about it feeling exposed and that's why we just we want to avoid the money conversation so I would hope that the one thing that people take away from the conversation is let's get rid of the word money sometimes in our head and use the word resource instead mm -hmm. and just reframe it because that's making it a wider context then because there's all the resources that you listed, Helen. Nick, before you part with your money next time with someone, just I'd ask you to remember that line from Helen's blog that if you've got half a brain because you're listening to us, we know you've got all brain cells, okay? That somebody's <laughs> money is no reflection of their character, talent or skill. So do not let your choices or decisions just be framed by the money. All right, well, that's been a fascinating conversation. Now, Helen, as we draw to the end, we like to ask our guests some random questions. <laughs> so if you're sitting comfortably, we're going to ask you some yeah. questions, if that's all right. So you can ask me. I'm just curious. Are you reading a book at the moment, Helen? I reading? am reading but just reading. I, what's so funny is that I'm still like I think I told you ages ago what book I was reading and because I never sit down and read I'm still reading it it's the gift of dyslexia because I'm suspecting my oldest son is dyslexic he's still super young and I work with I coach a lot of neurodiverse people so reading the gift of dyslexia and it's basically that like 
makes your brain really cool. Like, it makes your brain work in a really cool way. So, yeah, this is what I'm learning. But I haven't got very far through it. But it's just a slow read, slow burn. You're, you're taking your time and you digest. <laughs> yeah, it's not a... But it is very interesting. <laughs> All right. Have you got an interesting fact about yourself that you would be comfortable sharing? I can't. I'm looking to see what... Because what, I... Uh, oh, yeah, that was it, wasn't it? So people don't know this, but I still do like anti-trafficking work on the side of what I do. So I actually still work in eradicating sex trafficking. <laughs> and it depends. So probably sometimes where I go off on tangent. So yeah, I still do anti-trafficking work, which is from my past life. I used to do that. I was a lawyer and then I worked in that kind of field. And now I'm in coaching, in coach training. I would say that you're well-resourced. With your experiences well, <laughs> and your values, and are you even resourced in some of his some experiences? <laughs> dare, dare, just last last question: Dare we ask what your what your last Google search was? Oh my god! Uh, we I've can always put an explicit rating on the episode. <laughs> I just said, I just, I just, I, I just, I realized that I, like when I when I saw these questions in advance, I wrote something. And I'm like, so now I'm trying to think of something up. Was I actually just going? You can, you can no, have your phone Google. in and check. <laughs> yeah, I can, and I do know what it was. I googled how often can you actually surf in Joss Bay because I've been thinking about moving down to like back to where I used to live when I was young, and I love to surf even though I'm terrible at it, especially after my C-section. My core strength is terrible, but and I was googling like how often you can actually surf there because I'm choosing between places to move to. <laughs> Okay, and how well, often can you surf though? In case anybody else needs to it's know, it's very vague. It's very, it's very vague. It's vague, and I think the answer is you can surf there a bit, like when it's cold, which is actually fine by by me. Right, you know. So, all right. All right. Well, Helen, just thank you so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom with us, and letting us borrow borrow the name of your blog. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank you, Michelle. And thank you for listening to us. So all that remains for me to say is to take care of yourselves until next time.